Welcome survivors to Scavenger Squad. I'm Kato Genesis and this Fallout 4 guide series will focus on quick tips on particular in-game features with the help of a featured guest. Joining me this time is Yorkshire Yank. Feel free to introduce yourself and tell the lovely wastrels what you do. Hey up everyone, it's awesome to be here. My name is Yorkshire Yank and I make fast-paced, tightly edited gameplay videos of tons of different games, as well as extremely interactive daily live streams of the Fallout series. And it is a pleasure to have you on, York. The Boston Wastes are full of treacherous areas, some full of mighty foes, radiation, or both. In these situations, it's great to have a trusty suit of power armor to stay protected while you thwart whatever comes your way. In this guide, we're covering the basics of keeping your power armor in top condition through repair and modification. To do that, we'll be showing you wastrels where to find the best junk with the components you need. To open up all options when applying mods to power armor, it will require related perks, primarily armorer and science. Blacksmith is also recommended if you enjoy bludgeoning your adversaries to any degree. Like mentioned in previous scavenger squad guides, to get components much easier, it's highly recommended to get the scrapper perk in the intelligence column. I'll have York start us off with the types of power armor you can acquire. Though limited on mod slots and customization, Raider power armor is the easiest to maintain. Just hammer in some more aluminum and you'll still be far better protected than you would with standard apparel. While not the strongest, the T45 series has plenty of potential when it comes to mods and customization. This is likely the first power armor you'll come across if you take part in the beginning story quests. Another that's easily recognizable, the T51 series provides more protection than the T45 and Raider power armor naturally. Much more advanced than the T45 power armor, the T60 series is also favored by the Brotherhood of Steel in the Commonwealth. Wearing this power armor is just short of turning the user into a fully articulate walking tank. Over the last several decades, the X01 was employed by the now defeated Enclave. The most advanced power armor available, the X01 will make you a walking tank and has the widest selection of upgrades for any task minus certain faction paint jobs. Power armor consists of seven parts, the frame, helmet, torso, arms, and legs. While the frame just holds everything together and distributes power, each of the other parts have their own durability and mod slots. Each piece of power armor can have up to three mods normally, model material and miscellaneous, excluding the helmet, which has four mods if you include the headlamp. With that in mind, next we'll go over each mod slot and what junk you'll need to look for when upgrading them. Adhesive should be expected and understood and will be described later. The model of your power armor pieces are the basis of their damage, energy, radiation resistance, and durability. The higher rank of model, the better protected you'll be. Junk items, surgical tray, hot plate, biometric scanner, ashtray, and plunger. And where to look for these things? You'll find them in hospitals, apartments, lounges, and diners. The material upgrades are for things like custom paint jobs, extra plating, and shielding. The junk items you want to be looking out for are alarm clocks, telephones, pencils, blast radius board game, toy rocket ship, toy alien, TV dinner tray, coffee pot, coffee cup, microscope, silver pocket watch, and plunger. And you'll find these things in rural homes, schools, laboratories, and diners. All right, onward to the miscellaneous mods. The miscellaneous mods are where you can truly make the power armor yours. These mods include jetpacks, Tesla coils, emergency protocols, sensors, stealth fields, and a whole lot more. The junk items you'll want to be looking for are aluminum canisters, alarm clocks, telephones, biometric scanners, Abraxo cleaner, extinguishers, gold-plated flip lighters, gold pocket watches, coffee cups, microscopes, lamps, and cigar boxes. Coffee cups contain ceramic, which can be found in just about any kind of dishware, so keep an eye out for any dishes. Where to look for these things are in hospitals, labs, again, offices, robot manufacturers, bars, and diners. While the headlamps are limited to helmets, the headlamp replaces your Pip-Boy light while wearing power armor. There's a variety of colors and even an extra bright version to choose from. The headlamp components needed are aluminum, copper, fiber optics, nuclear materials, and circuitry. Where to look for these things? It's the same as before, hospitals and such. Most of the components that you need are going to be found in the previous like miscellaneous and material categories for the headlamp too. Aluminum, circuitry, ceramic, and rubber are primary components for power armor. To ensure that you can at least repair regularly, grab aluminum cans, canisters, dishware, and scrap those tires at settlements. As for the circuit boards, just take everything from robotic enemies and you'll be set. It's been established in previous components guides that adhesive is essential. Power maintenance is no different. As mentioned in prior guides, grab all the wonder glue and duct tape you see. You can also create vegetable starch at a cooking station with the right produce to make five units of adhesive each time. It's really no surprise that power armor needs a source of power to fully function. Rare fusion cores are that power source. So where can you find them? Power generators carry one each. Sometimes the location has more than one generator, however. 
When the Brotherhood of Steel arrives in the Commonwealth, and under the agreement of joining them, there are plenty of ammo boxes and containers in the Pridwin, with fusion cores in them. Weapons vendors have been known to have at least a few fusion cores in their inventory. If you need that valuable energy and have some things to trade, that's the way to get them. And sentry bots. While one of the most vicious robots you will face, sentry bots have a set of two fusion cores which are available upon their defeat. We hope that you found this guide entertaining, useful, or a little of both. If you enjoyed this video and want more, you know what to do. This is Kato Genesis, and I'll have York take us out. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the guide, and if my voice wasn't too offensive to you, please check out my channel for more Fallout 4 content, as well as gameplay from other games.